Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today I'll continue the video that I posted last week where I told how you can install Mail.com and make your self-hosting web mail and in this way you have control for all the systems and control for all the emails that you receive. In this way, after some tests and some trials, I decided that I need to post this video to explain why you should not do it. Why I need to do it? Because if I only post a video and everyone started to follow it and install, maybe you're gonna have the same problems as me. At least I need to instruct you before you start to lose time or before you decide to do anything. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to explain why you should or shouldn't use your own host email server, I will go for the basics. In the last video, I show how you can install mail call, and this is the front page for this email call. Other thing that's interesting, you have a lot of setup information for this system. And one of the things that you need to set up, it's a DNS setup. And in this DNS configuration, you need to know how to configure the reverse DNS, you need to configure the minimum DNS for work, you need to configure the DKIM and uh, SPF and others, and you need to have some advanced configuration. But the good thing for Mail Code is that they give all this information for you. If you remember my previous video, you have this configuration for Sauber Lab, and here they will give all the records. You can download this record, you can input in your Cloudflare or in your other system, and you can have all this DNS working in an easy way. Other thing, you can create some ways to make this dynamic DNS to be always updated. In the case of Cloudflare, you can create a Cloudflare dynamic DNS, and all the time that your DNS or your IP address change, this dynamic DNS will change as well, so it's always update. The important is not how can you do it, because in the next video I will try to show how you can do it, but uh, what's the implication for it? And now that come my point. Why or if you should or shouldn't use this mail server or your self-hosting system to host your email? And I will say no, you shouldn't do it, and I will give some reasons why. First thing, if you go for the big companies as Microsoft, Google, I'm telling the big ones, have others that you can use, they have a group of engineers that will be responsible for infrastructure and will have a group of engineers that will be responsible for security and continue on. Also, they will have more than one server in more than one location. So they have a server A, B and C. If A fail, you still have B and C and you still be able to receive this email. When you start to host your own email, you need to keep all the system update. It means that your patches or all the updates need to be update. All your system need to be secure because if uh, any hardware fail, you're not going to receive the email. If uh, the electricity fail, you're not going to receive the email. If perhaps the internet fail for one day, two days, you're not going to receive an email. And if it's critical for your business and you really need to receive that email because you make money with it or you write some information and perhaps you don't receive it, it make you really frustrated or maybe make you lose money and that make you reconsider it. And if anything happened and you don't have that available time to troubleshooting and try to understand what is wrong in order to fix it, and in this time, you don't receive an email or you don't receive any important information that you would like to receive. This will make you think twice for the price that you're going to pay, considering that's a uh, email you can get for four fifty pounds, eight, ten, and continue on. Other thing that's important for you to know it's uh, once that you use the DNS and you configure it yourself email because you're using a dynamic DNS and all the configurations is not as enterprise one, sometimes this email go directly for spam. Why they do it? In the past, a lot of people could only get a computer, get a mail server running, create a DNS, make all the configuration and send 100,000 emails a day. Because of it, these big companies started to block a little bit in order to avoid too much spam. So if you send 1,000 emails a month, 
or day, it means that uh, potentially you are spun and that potentially something's wrong with it. Not with it if you don't have all the requirements minimum that they will expect as a static IP. If you have dynamic IP, normally they will check and check if you, this IP is yours and go reverse activity. And if it's not static, they will say, hmm, it may be a little bit risk, so could be spun and could go for spun or either don't receive at all. So have a lot of things that the companies try to block because of the spans. Few people that do bad things make everyone else block or don't have all the access for everything. Other thing that's important to highlight, once that you configure your email server, you need to open some ports to be able to access the external, S25 and others. Because you open those ports, you expose those to the internet and anyone that uh, know a little bit about the internet or some hackers, you know that port 25 is for emails and that they will try to open this port and they will try to expose this information. If you don't keep everything updated, they could access your system and that uh, have access for your, your data anyway. Tell about the data, you're gonna ask if I start to host in these big companies, they will be able to see my emails. And you'll say, yes, potentially they can see your email unless it's end-to-end -end encrypted. If it's only encrypted by the server, some point in time, yes, they will be able to see what you have. And I don't know how much data they will collect it. But uh, in the same time, once that you send an email, your data is not fully encrypted as well. Unless both your server and the final use have the same encrypted key, some point in time, this email will be unencrypted for be able to access it. And this is exactly stunt. Someone, anyone in the internet could access it and could collect this data. So in the same time that you say, I prefer to host because all the information is with me, once that you send and receive email, this information will be open to the internet and is still not good in the same way. So you go out and try to host yourself email for protect your data, but once that you send email, this data is not full protect as well. But don't understand, it's not everything bad for you self-host your email. Why I'm telling about it? Because it's a good learn curvature once that you start to do it. Once that you decide to host your own email, principally for not production or only for learning, I will say, you're gonna need to learn how to install Docker, how to work with Linux, how to work with Docker Compose, how to configure the DNS and all the information that you need to do. You need to understand how to configure the dynamic DNS if you don't have a static IP. Other things, you need to understand how you make your system robust, how to open ports in your router or to expose some ports external your network and continue on. So it's not everything bad. You can learn a lot to make your own email and you can learn a lot what to configure. So as a learning curvature is really good, as a troubleshooting, it's really good. But for production, I don't advise it because it's high risk that all your data is compromised. It's high risk that everything that you do is not received, is not work the way that I expect. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not yet. And see you next time. Bye.